The UK science community was about 90% pro-Remain. That came out of various polls during uh, the referendum about higher education, scientists and engineers, uh, or scientists in general from, from different uh, bases. In fact, there wasn't a single vice chancellor of any university in England, Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland or Wales that was for leaving. There's a good 200 or more uh, universities. So the science community was very strongly for Remain, particularly because of the added value that we get from the science programme, which facilitates collaborations, uh, which uh, facilitates a lot of UK leadership, not just of Europe, but the world. Anyway, on the day that we left the EU, there was immediate turmoil from that point onwards. At Scientists for EU, we did a survey across the science community about what impacts were felt already within the first week or two. And we found that the falling pound had blown budgets, uh, meant that uh, contracts had been stopped and hirings had been stopped. Various people who had uh, taken up jobs to work in the UK actually cancelled those in order to stay out. And there was lots of turmoil around the EU science programme where people were starting to uh, pull out of collaborations with the UK or ask the UK to stand down from leadership position to other position. So from the get-go, uh, there was lots of anxiety. Also, there are lots of academics within uh, universities that had received in the aftermath or during Brexit xenophobic abuse or where of their friends getting that, not from the universities themselves, but when they went out, you know, further afield uh, in the towns and around. Anyway, the government uh, realised the value of science and tried to uh, make sure that there was no disruption immediately to the science programme. That was one of the early things that Theresa May bolted in. However, the constant threats of uh, no deal is better than a bad deal, and we could have a, a no deal Brexit at any point, meant that effectively from the year 2016 until the year 2020, we went from joint first position with Germany, down, 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 down the scale, to by 2020 being in fifth place behind Germany, France, Spain, Italy, then us, just above the Netherlands, in fifth place um, on the Horizon programme, having lost, compared to Germany, 1.5 billion uh, on that programme, and in the last year, down 30% of the grants that otherwise we would have been getting. So that's that took us in a, into a really low place. And that was just the ongoing uncertainty. Then when Boris Johnson's TCA deal came through, science was one of the priorities, you know, being a big win for us. We we profited immensely from it. And so it was like, okay, we're going to this. Okay, we're starting from fifth position, which isn't great, but we can build our way back up. The problem was that because our government decided to monkey around with the Northern Ireland Protocol and the deal that they'd already done and tried to backtrack on it, the EU Commission decided not to sign us off on the actual entrance to the next science programme, Horizon Europe, worth 95 billion euros over the next seven years. And so we have sat, as our own science minister now says, on the bench during this programme. That means we've got access to some collaborative funds, but have not been able to be coordinators uh, leading programmes. And with our European Research Council grants, so uh, glamorous grants given to individuals, but worth one to two, well, sometimes to three million, and so thereby you hire a team. We used to do brilliantly at those, but because there hasn't been an agreement yet to invite us onto the programme, there have been now coming up to 200 ERC grants that we have won, that the EU has then had to say, you can't do it in the UK, you have to find another country or it gets cancelled. The government have stepped in and said, we will cover that grant. We will pay the same money to fill in the gap. Please take it up in the UK. But still, we have lost dozens of those because some of those ERC grant winners have said, you know what, that you know, this is an ERC grant. You know, I want that on my CV. I will find another lab in Europe and take it across. The situation we are in for Horizon 2020, which is really, you know, our cutting edge position, 
as a leadership country within Europe, thereby being a leadership country on the globe, is now that we have been sitting on the bench, as George Freeman, our current science minister, says, throughout 2021, uh, throughout 2022, and now going into 2023. And lots of people are starting to get itchy about this. This was something that should have been solved over two years ago. We have been losing out. The science minister and others are thinking about maybe putting that funding elsewhere to try and build us international programs from the UK. But obviously, unless you're going to pay for 30 other countries, there's no way you can set up a multilateral program without the investment of other countries, whereby you can lead 30 nation teams and so forth and so on. It's, it's a mess. We've been bleeding a lot on that front. That's just the science program. There is also, of course, uh, the space program, uh, whereby with you've got Copernicus, which is Earth observation, and you've got Galileo, which is our own European version of GPS. We led a lot of the key technology in developing that associated with some real high security stuff that these satellites would fire back for the purposes of military and other intelligence. Because we are outside the EU now, we no longer have access to, to the really high definition stuff of that. This is stuff that we used to lead. So one, our businesses are out from actually pitching for um, those cutting edge initiatives on that program that we used to lead. But secondly, we're actually cut out of receiving that information. So our government has gone and had to spend in order to amount to money, trying to buy up private services, services to try and patch in the gaps. Then there's the European Medicines Agency, which basically, if we'd still had in London at the beginning of the pandemic, could have gone at the same pace as our MHRA, and we would have been the absolute stars of Europe in terms of approving everything before the US and getting it rolling for everyone first in the world out of you know major developed nations. But we've lost that. That's now in Amsterdam, taking with it hundreds of jobs and tens of millions of uh, pounds in revenue. Uh, we've also uh, stepped out of our Eurotom links, which means that things that we are associated with via Eurotom, uh, such as the big international fusion, like global fusion collaboration in France called ITER, again, were not connected to that at the moment. Then there's direct investments, which have plummeted. Then there's talent, which is harder to get a hold of. And let's talk about universities there, because after Brexit kicked in in 2021, our universities were 40% lower for EU students coming in. East Anglia had, for example, 50% lower. And the Russell universities, which usually better buffered against us, still had a 20% drop of EU students coming in. And, and in 2022, you know, that, that has continued. There's been a 16% drop. That's because EU students who could normally pay to come to UK universities at home fees are now pitched in at the same level as, as, as international students from, from China and the US at, at extortionate levels. And a lot of them are turning their noses up that, especially those that can get free university education in their home countries or rather EU countries. And EU students are particularly valuable, not just for networking, but also for the fact that they were 50% more likely to get first class degrees in UK universities because they're the ones that are more ambitious, more adventurous, want to travel, you know, they're more switched on. We've lost so much of that extra capacity thanks to Brexit. And on top of that, there is, of course, the Erasmus programme previously, we were signed up to the Erasmus programme. We sent a certain number of students out and got a ton of European students coming back in. So much more. And coming to our universities and not just receiving one of our greatest exports, you know, our higher education from the UK, but that greatest UK export happens on our soil. People come here and they live here. They spend money here on accommodation here and cabs here and food here and so much in the local economies here. That's been replaced by Turing, which is only about sending students out and it's not working particularly well. So we've had across science and higher education, all of these insults. So finally,